This is the 10th in a series of videos that I'm making for a course that I'm teaching in elementary number theory. And here we're going to look at the notion of solving linear congruences. But before we do that, let's recall what it means for two integers to be congruent modulo n. So we say a and b are congruent mod n, and we write this. So we've got a triple equal sign here, and then these parentheses with mod n here. And we read this as A is congruent to B mod N. So we define this notion by N dividing B minus A. And that's equivalent to A and B having the same remainder when dividing by N. Often this one's a little bit quicker to check, but they're all the same. Okay, so the first theorem that we want to prove goes like this. The congruence AX is congruent to B mod N has a solution for X if and only if the GCD of A with N divides B. And in this case, it has the GCD of A with N incongruent solutions. So you could potentially have more than one solution if this GCD is not equal to one. Okay, so let's maybe get started with the forward direction. Okay, so starting with the forward direction to the proof, we want to suppose that x naught solves our congruence. And so there's a little bit of a mind shift here. Here we're thinking about x as being a variable, but now here x naught is the solution. So in other words, we have a x naught is congruent to b mod n. And from here, we want to move to this congruence to an equation within the integers. So we can do that by saying that n divides ax0 minus b. That's the definition of congruence modulo n. But now we can move to the definition of divisibility and say that a times x0 minus b is equal to n times y. And this is going to be true for some y, which is an integer. Okay, now let's move things around a little bit. So we've got a x naught minus n times y is equal to b. Okay, but let's recall that linear combinations like this of a and n are always multiples of the GCD of A and N. That's something that we proved earlier. So just the fact that we can write B as a linear combination of A and N means that B is a multiple of their GCD. In other words, the GCD of A with N. But being a multiple of the GCD is the same thing as the GCD dividing you. So that finishes this direction. Okay, so now let's move on to the reverse direction. Okay, so let's start by supposing that the GCD of A with N divides B. And while we're at it, let's introduce a little bit of notation. Maybe we'll set D equal to this GCD. So we've got D is equal to the GCD of A with N. But this divisibility, along with that new name, tells us that we can write b as d times k for some integer k. Now we're going to use Bezu's identity with the GCD of a with n, keeping in mind that we've renamed it like this. So let's maybe go ahead and take integers, we'll call them x0 and y0, such that we have a x0 minus n times y0 is equal to d. So that's always possible, again, because d is equal to the GCD. The GCD can always be rewritten as a linear combination of these two numbers. Often there's a plus here, but I can always just like absorb that in and out of the y not as needed. Okay, but we're not looking for this kind of thing to be equal to d. We want it to be equal to b. But we can get there just by multiplying by k. So let's take this entire equation and multiply it by k. So that's going to give us a times kx0 minus n times ky0 is equal to d times k, but that's equal to b. Okay, nice. 
But now, let's maybe go ahead and introduce a little bit more notation. We'll say x1 is equal to kx0 and y1 is equal to ky0. And notice now we have a times x1 is equal to b plus n times y1. But from there, we can move the b over. We could have done that all at once. But we have ax1 minus b is equal to n times y1. But that's exactly what we need to say that n divides ax1 minus b. But if n divides ax1 minus b, that means that ax1 is congruent to b modulo n. So x1 is the solution to our congruence, which we have boxed up there in purple. So we indeed do have a solution. Okay, so now we've proven this. Now let's move on to proving this yellow bit. Okay, we just proved this equivalence. Now we're gonna prove how many incongruent solutions there are. Well, we've already got one solution. That's by what we assumed up here. And now we're ready to move, use that solution to build a bunch more solutions. So we'll call our kind of seed solution x0. So in other words, we know that a x0 is congruent to b mod n, and then all the equivalent things that go along with that. So we'll consider xm, which is equal to x0 plus m times n over d. This might look a little worrisome because we've got n over d. But let's recall that d is a divisor of n, making n over d an integer. Now you might say, well, what values of m are we taking here? Well, we're going to take m between 0 and d minus 1. But that's actually a really good setup, because how many m's are in this range? Well, there are exactly d, which is equal to gcd of a with n. So these are our proposed incongruent solutions. So we first need to show that they're solutions and then that they are indeed incongruent. So let's show that they're solutions first. So let's calculate AXM and notice that that's equal to AX0 plus M times A over D times N. So I've just distributed my A through and done like a little bit of a strange multiplication over here in the right just to make it all work out. Okay. So now let's again notice that d is a divisor of a, which makes this an integer. So if we start reducing mod n, all of this will go away because it's a multiple of n. And so we're just left with a x naught, but we assume that that was b. So this is congruent to b mod n. So just to reiterate, we've shown that each of these xms are indeed solutions to our original congruence. Now we need to show that they are incongruent solutions. We can do that as follows. Let's suppose that xi is congruent to xj mod n, and hopefully that will imply that i is equal to j. Okay, so that means that x0 plus i times n over d is congruent to x0 plus j times n over d modulo n. But now we can move some things around here and cancel some things as needed. For example, the x0 cancel, and we're left with i n over d is congruent to j o times n over d modulo n. But now the GCD of n over d with n is 1. But now we use the definition of these being congruent mod n to say that that means that i minus j times n over d is in fact a multiple of n. I'll call it n times l. Okay, but notice we've got an n on both sides of that equation. That tells us that i minus j over d is equal to l, but more specifically, it's an integer. So let's see what we've got. i and j are both between 0 and d minus l, yet by this equation right here, they are a multiple of d. So the only way that you can take a difference of two things that are between 0 and d minus 1 
and get a multiple of D is for them to be the same. In other words, I minus J is equal to zero, meaning that I is equal to J, which is exactly what we wanted to show, to show that the only way these were congruent was for I to be equal to J. In other words, they're the same to start with. So we indeed do have D incongruent solutions. Okay, so let's get rid of this and we're gonna do an example or two. Okay, for our first example, we'll solve the congruence 12x is congruent to eight mod 20. Well, let's first notice that the GCD of 12 with 20 is equal to four, but that divides eight. So that means there is a solution. So I'll just put a check mark there to say that there is a solution. And how many solutions are there? Well, there are exactly GCD of 12 with 20 solutions. In other words, there are four incongruent solutions modulo 20. And we can actually use those solutions modulo 20 to get all of the solutions over the integers, which maybe we'll hint at at the end. Okay, so following the structure of the proof, we first want to solve the following equation. That's 12 x naught plus 20 y naught is equal to four. It's not super important to use subscripts here, but I just find it a little bit easier to keep track of what's going on. Okay, well, how can you solve this? Well, you could use the extended Euclidean algorithm, but I think this is simple enough just to guess and check. Notice that x naught equals two and y naught equals negative one most definitely works. And so that gives us the following equation. We have 12 times two minus 20 times one is equal to four. Now we'll take this equation and multiply it by whatever we need to multiply by to get eight. So you might say, well, why did we set this equal to four first? That's because that was our GCD. And then we build that GCD up. But how do I do that? I just multiply it by two. So that gives me 12 times four. I'm making sure to multiply the two into this two because I really want to leave this 12 alone as it's part of our original congruence minus 20 times two is equal to eight. So this four right here is our first solution, which we would maybe call X. Okay, so we can start building our incongruent solutions modulo 20. So the first one that we get from here is four. And then let's recall how we get the rest of them we will add multiples of 20 divided by the GCD. So multiples of 20 divided by four, that'll be multiples of five. So adding one multiple of five gives us nine, and then we'll get 14, and then we'll get 19. So notice that this is four, this is four plus five, four plus five times two, four plus five times three. Okay, so let's maybe move on to another example. For our next example, we'll try to solve the congruence 10x is congruent to 3 mod 15. Let's first check if it's solvable in the first place. So to do that, we need to calculate the GCD of 10 with 15. That's 5. Oh, but that does not divide 3. So again, the GCD of this number and this number must divide this number. And that doesn't happen here. So that tells us that there is indeed no solution. So this was a quick one. Okay, let's maybe get rid of this and we'll do one more example. Okay, so for our last example, we'll solve the congruence 143x is congruent to 44 mod 231. So let's start by noticing that the GCD of 143 and 231 is in fact equal to 11. Now, how would you calculate that by hand? Well, probably with the Euclidean algorithm. Then 11 most definitely divides 44, so that means we're good to go. There are solutions here. And how many solutions are there? Well, there will be 11 incongruent solutions. So first, we need to solve the following congruence, and that is gonna be 143 X naught plus 231 Y naught is equal to 11. 
So again, the GCD can always be written as a linear combination. So how would you do this in practice? Well, you would do it with the extended Euclidean algorithm. So what naturally comes out of the Euclidean algorithm is 143 times negative eight, and then plus 231 times five is equal to 11. Okay, but what does that mean? Well, we can reduce all of this mod 231, and that means that 143 times negative eight is congruent to 11 mod 231. But we wanna solve this congruent to 44 mod 231, not 11, so we can just take this and multiply it by four. So that'll give us 143 times negative 32 is congruent to 44 modulo 231. So there's our first solution, it's negative 32. But generally we want numbers that are between 0 and 230 when we're working mod 231. So here you can use the fact that minus 32 is the same thing as 199 mod 231. And how did we get that? Well, we just did 231 minus 32. That gives us 199. So that means we can replace this negative 32 with 199, meaning that we have 143 times 199 is congruent to 44 mod 231. This is actually really good to see that we needed to use this trick because sometimes the extended Euclidean algorithm will give you a negative attached to the one that you really want a positive attached to. But you can always switch the sign once you move back to congruences pretty easily. Okay, so our seed solution is 199, and then all other solutions, which I'll write as xm, will be of the form 199 plus m times, well, let's see, it'll be 231 divided by 11. So that's in fact 199 plus 21m. And then you can take m between 0 and 11 minus 1 or 10, and then reduce mod 231 to put it in the right range as needed. So I'll let you guys write down what all the solutions are based off of that. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this, and then I'll give some warm-up exercises for class. So just a couple of quick warm-up problems today, solving these two congruences. So we've got 9x is congruent to 5 mod 25, and, and 987x is congruent to 610 mod 1597. And that's a good place to stop.